Can you guess what animals we have? Well, of course you can. Um, unfortunately, Taylor told you. There they are. Some elephants, slightly different angle. They're down towards a fairly, well, substantial drainage line. The one I was, oh, excuse me, the one I was talking to you about earlier that feeds into the Mara River. And its catchment, of course, is the Ola escarpment, uh, just around where we live. And where we live is Angama Mara, which is just over there. Beautiful, beautiful camp. Now, pause. you want to know if those elephants will cross the Mara River. They will absolutely cross the river. They will cross it often. And they're not the only ones, actually. The lions, too, will swim the river fairly regularly. Uh, not if they're very little, but they will. Apparently, the Angama Pride has both has been seen the other side of the river, as has the Ololololololo Pride. And... So we think that, the, and certainly the Paradise Pride is found both sides of the river regularly. And so, yes, they do cross the river. Um, buffalo, I imagine, do the same sort of thing. We know, of course, that the wildebeest and zebra and topi and Thompson's gazelles take their lives in their hands crossing the river. But I've often wondered why it is that something like a lion would not see a river like the Mara as a boundary because there's no reason a lion shouldn't be taken by a crocodile. And I suppose that they have, well, more sharp, more sharper defensive mechanisms than something like a wildebeest does, so perhaps the crocodiles avoid them. You can see the wind just starting to pick up a little bit as the weather comes back in from the south. It's not very close by. I think we're, we're, pretty, we're pretty safe at the moment. Don, are you wondering if the animals ever react badly to thunderstorms? Well, it's interesting. Uh, you know, when the storm broke today and we had this enormous clattering down of hail at one stage, um, there was certainly some reaction. There was some running around. We were almost in amongst the wildebeest and zebra, and we certainly had a little bit of reaction from the zebra we were around. That we were around. They started running. And then as we came closer to the north, the one thing I did notice was a sort of large flock of ostrich. And this large flock of ostrich seemed to be uh, aligning themselves almost in a sort of defensive posture as the storm came towards them. So, yes, I imagine that some various animals have different strategies to look, you know, to survive during big thunderstorms and that sort of thing. But I don't think that there's necessarily a huge amount they can do. Some will head for the thicker bush, definitely, to try and stay away and get away from clattering rain. But, you know, out on the plains, if the big storms come, there's not much you can do except grin and bear it. Righty, what we're going to do now, there's just a, a little, well, there's a corner, basically. There's nothing fancy about a corner. There's a corner, and just above the corner, there's a water hole, and next to the water hole, there's a shepherd's tree, and in that shepherd's tree was where we saw the Angama lioness earlier on, and we actually watched her hunt. This was long before we came live. We watched her hunt an impala who unfortunately saw her, and, well, not unfortunately for him, it was very nice for him, he escaped. So we're going to go up and see what's happening there now. Let's head across now to a waterhole in the winter in the Sabi Sand. <laughs> 